Welcome everyone uh, to Tech Sparks. Uh, my name is Ravi Chabria. I'm a VP of Engineering and uh, Managing Director of NetApp in India. Uh, today, I think on behalf of NetApp, we'd like to talk to you about innovation and growth in an area of digital transformation. Digital transformation was a line item on many business agendas long before COVID-19 came along. What's ended up happening is the pandemic has catapulted this to the top of the priority list. Virtually every business is talking about digital transformation now. Uh, but the point really is that it has been something that has a force for the industry and for how our customers think for a fairly long time. Now, what this means in terms of business priorities is in the short term, the focus has been around business continuity, not just about business continuity, but specifically about a few things. Cost has become important as people were a little uncertain, businesses were a little uncertain about what to expect. Work enablement was very obviously going to be going remote. Customer engagement was going to be going remote. And I think that's kind of what dominated the thought process in the first few weeks of the pandemic. Now, what did happen is customers that were already down a path of transformation had made it that journey a little bit uh, further along than others coped exceptionally well, but others started catching up. If you look beyond the short term, the phase we are in now, seven months in, uh, the transformation is only accelerating. People are now talking about resilience of business. What that really means is there a fundamentally new way to reach a customer, to provide a service or a product offering differently than we did before, as opposed to just thinking simply remote. In many cases, that takes you down the path of, can you digitize the customer's experience? Are you able to accelerate your product and service innovations processes. Are you able to create new value rapidly? Are you able to connect with your value chain and your ecosystem in a more digital manner? Is your operations digital? And then again, of course, it touches upon just not you and your ecosystem or your supply chain. It actually touches every part of your organization. Now the question is, what do these priorities translate into when you start looking at informational technologies. So we've talked about digital transformation. Every industry was kind of going through that at its own pace. What it fundamentally comes down to is people are building applications, infrastructure, services, customer offerings differently. In the terms of how it means to develop software or systems, you do look at things like, am I using standard uh, tools? Am I using standard platforms? And um, the reason people talk about standard platforms, can you do it rapidly? Are you able to abstract and automate pieces of your infrastructure? So infra is not dominating your thought process. The business transformation is what you're kind of being able to focus on. It comes down to refactoring and replacing legacy code in terms of containerization, in terms of moving things into the cloud, in terms of being more service oriented, in terms of the offerings we create, or actually moving towards more SaaS offerings that are publicly available. All of this is accelerating the journey to cloud. People are asking and rapidly deploying technology like DevOps, containers, microservices. Uh, the entire premise is predicated upon speed. Cloud is not just a destination. Cloud has now become synonymous for speed. What used to be considered as scale is now being kind of taken over by this notion of how rapidly can I innovate? How quickly can I meet a new customer need? And you're doing that either by taking legacy, turning it to be SaaS-like, taking what used to be an, or a legacy data center, making it more modern like a cloud, or entirely looking at deploying in the cloud or entirely looking at turning to a SaaS provider. Regardless of all of these, right? And there are multiple use cases. It's the traditional platforms we talk about. It may be data mining, analytics, AI, 
Um, it may even be how IT is being procured. Uh, a lot of it is that the, uh, you know, the uh, legacy methods of kind of uh, long-term procurements are being replaced by more consumption-based uh, procurement models. All of these are translating into a set of business-driven IT priorities that companies such as NetApp and our industry is kind of innovating around. I come to this uh, quote from the Boston Consulting Group. It's very telling because for all this transformation, for all this uh, change that we're looking in the industry, data is likely to be the most unique or protectable competitive advantage of the future. I'd like to emphasize the word protectable. It really comes down to that cloud is going to enable a hell of a lot of things but it is data that is going to be creating the competitive advantage that is sustainable over a really long time. Entirely new businesses are being built on the back of data. And I think I'll walk you through a couple of customer examples soon too. But there's a very clear path to this digital transformation. It starts with data. And that's a quote from the CIO magazine that you can see on that screen. That's a big number, 13 zettabytes. I'll spare you the math. Uh, a zettabyte is 21 zeros, right? So it's 13 and 21 zeros. That's the amount of global data that's going to be stored in just a few years. We're talking about 18% compounded average growth. It comes down to a very simple point. Data is a growth business. 93% of enterprises that have been surveyed have a multi-cloud strategy. Not just a cloud strategy, a multi-cloud strategy. As in they use multiple clouds. And the reason they do that is because there are benefits and values that you can derive on different platforms. So it's not an either or. It's also true that many enterprises now uh, have a very decentralized strategy to how they kind of quickly generate value for customers. And so a number of these kind of focuses are creating what you can see happening. Multiple clouds, not just multiple clouds. They're connecting their existing data centers. They're modernizing their existing data centers. They're looking at their existing data set sets uh, that create the value and connecting it up into these clouds. And that's what we call a hybrid cloud uh, environment, which is where you're adapting the best of what you have in your data centers across multiple clouds. We'll also talk about the fact that many of our customers, when you see the way they deploy it, it's not just that they're using a legacy data center or a modern data center and multiple clouds. They're also creating cloud-like environments within their data center. And at the core of all of this, is where NetApp sits. And so now I'd like to spend a little bit of time talking to you about our strategy and execution to drive long-term success for a lot of these very, very innovative customers of ours. In doing so, I'd like to talk to you about what digital transformation means to NetApp, what we believe about digital transformation in the context our customers and how our customers view the world. I talked about this a little briefly. Speed is the new scale. If you look at the last decade of computing, there's the recognition that cloud allows you to build infrastructure at unprecedented scale. It allows it to you to consume it at whatever scale, big or large that you want to. What's changed in the last two years is it's become more synonymous with speed. Being able to use tools and software allows you to be more agile. Cloud is the platform, yet data is the currency that allows customers to be able to create value for end users. Hybrid cloud is already an IT architecture. Enterprises across the board are using it, whether they choose to call it hybrid or not, but the point is they are marrying existing modern data centers into multiple clouds. And data fabric, is how NetApp views is the manageability, 
the management of all data assets. In some sense, data centers of the past are now being replaced by data fabrics. It just comes down to this. Cloud software and data focused projects are resilient in the new economic environment because of these new architecture, because of this digital transformation. And to introduce NetApp, a little late in the presentation, NetApp is a cloud-led data-centric software company. I'd now like to kind of focus a little on our strategy and then give you a few examples of how our customers are using it uh, as we kind of get towards the tail end of our presentation. Our strategy is pretty simple. Apply our rich data-centric software innovation to help customers thrive in this new hybrid cloud world. When we talk about the data fabric, there are two elements to this conversation. One, as an enterprise data services company, we are taking those values to the public cloud. As a cloud oriented data company, we are taking the simplicity and flexibility of the cloud into the enterprise data center. So we're attacking and solving that problem from both ends to the benefit of our common customer. At this point, I'd like to pause, talk to you about how we are helping customers thrive in this hybrid cloud world. There are four examples across three dimensions and they are all very, very unique. And I'd like to talk to you about it. Now we all talk about SAP. It's a very well-known brand. We all do know a lot about it. What I found surprising, a fact that I didn't know, 72% of all global transactions at some point touch an SAP system. That's an astounding number. Also, SAP has a strong legacy and under recognition as a enterprise software company, a legacy style enterprise software company. It has increasingly become obvious now that it is one of the most modern companies in the space. In fact that um, it is completely in some sense cloud enabled. Public cloud, private cloud, multi-cloud, hybrid cloud. And NetApp stands at the core of SAP HANA's enterprise cloud platform. NetApp stands at the core of SAP when it runs on Azure, or it stands at the core of SAP when it runs on Amazon's web service. NetApp is also at the core when you run SAP on-prem. So it's a perfect example of this hybrid strategy as it's applied to some really difficult to deploy applications. Things that people didn't think belong in the cloud. It's almost like the heart of the data center is now moving into the cloud. And SAP is doing that by enabling 30 to 40% faster deployment of new releases, new capability, new workloads because of this focus on cloud. Next, I want to talk to you about Arcterex. Arcterex is a Vancouver-based global design company focused on outerwear and equipment that's related to that segment. When they look at their infrastructure, they had a very different challenge. They were looking at cloud services that they were using across Amazon, uh, spread globally, and wanted to be able to get a single integrated, consolidated, view of their data that allowed them to, to uh, collaborate across teams. And they found a very simple solution to it. They came to NetApp and used NetApp's cloud services on Amazon Web Services to be able to stitch together that platform into a data fabric. I don't, next, I'd like to talk to, be, uh, talk to you about um, I'd next like to talk to you about Willis Towers Watson. They are a global brokerage. They produce brokerage solutions. 35,000 employees, 140 customers. Their problem was they had a number of data centers, NetApp powered data centers. And the solution that they sought was to be able to bridge these network, NetApp powered data centers into a public cloud. And there again, they found that the NetApp cloud offerings 
is what allowed them to do that very quickly to be able to again drive uh, scale and then also a ability to be able to manage the entire entity. Finally, I want to talk to you about ICON. ICON is based in Dublin, Ireland. They call themselves a clinical development company. They kind of help their clients accelerate the development of drugs and devices. Anything from accelerating a clinical trial uh, to kind of bringing new products into market. Now at its core, it maintains data, mountains and mountains of data. And that data is the most critical asset that they have. It is critical to the success of that company. It is their unique proposition in the acceleration of things like clinical trials. And this is something, a topic most of us are now very familiar with uh, given the pandemic. Now, what they ended up wanting to do was of course, first create a more modern infrastructure. And they went down the path of creating a private cloud within their own data centers. What's even more interesting is that they found that they could use NetApp's expertise and specialization to look at new revenue models. When they looked at basically coupling the skills of their scientists, their data engineers, with the big data platform that they had, they were able to produce an offering that looked at clinical data as a service. And that's an example of how digital transformation can take even an existing business that's expertise based and modernize it in terms of how it is consumed. With that, I'd like to summarize. We've spoken about what we see happening in the industry. We have talked about how we've seen our customers transforming. We've seen about how our customers are actually transforming and changing the world with data. We've talked about NetApp's specialization in helping customers across this journey. And if I had to summarize it in one phrase, it's what you read on the screen. NetApp unlocks the best of the cloud. Thank you.